2019 Volkswagen Eagles. And our emissions control, 2019. So this is all electric, as you can see. And as you can tell by all the heater coolant hoses and routing valves, and this is a heat pump. So watch out for this baby on expenses. So this was a collision right here into this accumulator. This is an accumulator, not a receiver dryer. This is on the vapor suction side, but this is a heat pump. You notice there's one, two, three. We got three outlets or inlets, or they reverse depending on the mode. We have a solenoid controlling valve right here for anybody who wants to look up some part numbers and uh, see what they can find out on this. And ah, there we go, we focused right there. Now, what they didn't notice at first on first disassembly that this is supposed to be straight up and down, not pushed backwards. But further and closer inspection, you could see the switch is damaged. It did not release the refrigerant through there. Um, sometimes they do when you break the switch, sometimes it breaks that diaphragm in there that's like in a glass type epoxy coating and it'll snap that and it'll, it'll release the refrigerant. It did not do that in here. Little damage case, so this is gonna get replaced. These lines are bent and pushed back. So this line right here is not supposed to be at this sharp angle coming back like this. It's supposed to be down, coming down more like this. So this whole assembly is supposed to be straightened up out here. So this line is bent. Well, this line is a part of this assembly. So I think this line, we're gonna look up some prices on here. So we have this line right here. I don't know if this line got bent going back down to the compressor. This line is supposed to be this outlet right here. This outlet's supposed to be right about here. This is supposed to be more straight than this. This has get pushed over and they're near rubbing back this way. So this line is gonna get replaced this line is going to get replaced they didn't know about that this accumulator is going to get replaced and i'm trying to give you a view down there of how all the cooling on this system routes and different pumps there's one of our electric pumps way down there always keep the electric pump low below all the coolant in case it runs low you don't want your motor running dry we have a sensing flow, probably right here. Unless it's sensing temperature, and I think that you'd have to look that up. I'd have to pull it out and look at it to see if it's sensing flow or sensing temperature. But this line that's damaged, that goes right back here, it goes way back, back here, this one right here. It goes behind all this. All this has to be removed because that line connects behind this plate and everything way back there as the expansion valve right where my fingertip is it goes in right there so the, the coolant draining and all this has to be done and uh, guys you better start looking up your sure coolant draining procedures and be quiet Siri your coolant draining procedures. Uh, I had two shops call me this name with blown engines because their guys did not properly purge the air out of ice engines, you know, uh, gasoline engines. One was on an AMG and uh, the guys didn't do it right. They thought they did it right. Old school guys who don't like to read, a shop owner who doesn't like to read, service writer who doesn't like to look up information and read on coolant uh, procedures. Cost the shop $27,000 just because a coolant procedure wasn't performed right. How's that? And this is becoming more, I had two this month. This is becoming more and more common as shop owners become less educated and farther detached from the technical side of their business. As we're losing our more skilled technical guys who are leaving the industry and deciding to retire early, leave the industry or go somewhere else is leaving shops with more problems and forced to hire more untrained, lower skilled workers with less, less, um, where's that word coming from? Less experience 
and they were never under any kind of apprenticeship or formal training and the owners themselves are incapable totally incompetent incompetent about the technical side of the vehicles now you're in body shops body shops are being forced to become more technical and their comebacks or expenses are skyrocketing and there's no one to blame but yourself as the owner because the owner is responsible for everything out in the shop the owner is responsible if he purposely goes out of his way and hires a cheap low educated low skilled low experienced worker on purpose for that cheap employee and they make a mess up you the owner myself i am responsible for that not that employee the owner get your ass out there and try oh wait a minute that's right you can't because you're incapable of doing it then don't bitch okay uh let's get off that rant uh just a few minutes ago had another owner calling me back on a comeback they had on ac because they bought an AC machine because they took on Tesla at one of these Tesla locations that I go to and because it's a Tesla requirement and boy did he regret that. Um, it's a Tahoe and their guys tried to do it again. It came back like 10 months later, uh, AC low. And with their Robin Air big machine, they spent, they can't recharge it. They say, oh, my guys can't recharge it. It won't take the charge or something like that. Well, that's a red flag right there. There is no system that can't take the charge, especially from one of the R, R, and R machines, you know, recovery, recycler, recharge machines. Something's wrong with the machine. Something's wrong with the technician. Something's wrong. Something's just damn wrong. Oh, wait a minute. That's when you get the owner of the company to go out there and show the guys what to do, how to do it properly. That's right, again, we have an owner who can't. Totally incapable. This is the problem in this industry. Not all, but it's becoming more and more of a problem as these vehicles get more technical, they don't want to read. All right, that was my nice rant for today. And this e-golf, oh, parts, prices, sorry. Let's go off here on a tangent, well, let me not do that anymore. Heater hoses, AC lines, O-rings. There's 99 part numbers when I put in AC lines, 99 part numbers come up. There's a, a lot of stuff there. Yeah, I doesn't want to go. That's right, I broke my screen and it does really does not like gloves now. Uh, AC lines, O-rings, suction line right there. Let's look at this suction line. And by the way, this is a uh, site app so 99 Volkswagen e-golf SEL premium 1.5 hours the part where's the part at is that just for the o-ring 1.5 hours no that can't be right there we go so we have uh, this vehicle had an option of YF refrigerant or 134 it has two different part numbers because They'll come with different fittings on them if they're YF or 134, so make sure you get the right one. One's $180, one's 156. So that would be the suction hose right here with the YF or 134 fitting. Then we got the other one, and I believe that'll be this more complicated, expensive hose right suction hose this one with the t in it that goes down and the block and goes down with the hose going down there the yf one's cheap the yf one is 135 dollars but if it was the r134 one it's 335 dollars and then they give you your uh where do they have with auxiliary heater now where's what I'm looking for is uh, O-rings. They got O-ring part numbers on here too. Uh, AC line O-rings. When you call up Audi or Volkswagen, here's all the part numbers for your O-rings. And these are rel relatively cheap, only a dollar, two dollars for O-rings. And that's why I have a kid-proof protector on there. So. 
So this is, let me get you uh, right here. Let's get out of that. I want to show you guys this because you can uh, get this app for a free 90 uh, day trial and it doesn't want to show me the app. Okay, it doesn't want to go to the face, but this is the insignia of the app. When you go into your app store, you could get a 30 day free trial. I'll just let you know about that and give that app a try. All right, guys, catch you later.